Well, welcome back to another episode of Women in Leadership. My name is Reagan Jackson. I'm the program director for Young Women Empowered. We are a non-based, we are a nonprofit based in Seattle, Washington, and our mission is to cultivate the power of diverse young women to be creative, change, creative leaders and courageous change makers. And uh, yeah, so during this time of dealing with COVID-19. It's been just an unprecedented challenge. The purpose of this series is to highlight some women in our community who are showing us what leadership can look like in the face of adversity. Here with me today is Jyoti Patel. She is a mother, a DJ, a facilitator, manager and consultant, and the principal and owner of Spill LLC, an organization design firm that offers transformational programs that help corporate clients boost performance, spark creativity, and gain strategic clarity and alignment. She's also worked as a consultant, coach, and volunteer with YWE. Welcome, Jyoti. Thank you for having me, Reagan. It's good to be here with you today. Thanks for being here. So how, how has COVID-19 impacted your life, personally and professionally? Yeah, so uh, personally, it's been, there's, three, four of us in my family, my husband and two daughters who are almost four and almost seven. And so we haven't spent this much time together consistently ever, I don't think. And um, it's been an adjustment. I, I'd say that overall, it's been really lovely just to be able to spend more time with one another. We're definitely pushing each other's buttons and pushing up against one another's edges more. However, we're getting to know each other, we're supporting each other, we're helping one another process what's happening. And so, for example, like in the evenings, we sit down together for dinner and we talk, like we turn our devices off and we have a question of the day that usually my, my daughter will um, come up with. And we're really just not shutting ourselves off to what's happening, but just keeping the communication flowing and um getting outside we've been hiking and exploring our neighborhood there's a huge green belt near my home that we've been enjoying just almost out of necessity having to get out the house and moving our bodies exploring um cooking and reading and playing games so we've been enjoying it and i feel very fortunate for for the ability to do that because i know that it's a privilege right now what about the professional side? Yeah, so regarding a prof the professional side, you know, I had, I had some work lined up and it's gotten postponed. So from a work standpoint, I was kind of at a transition point with my consulting business and um, have had to pivot to offering um, workshops and facilitation services online. And so I've leaned into doing experiments. I believe a lot in the power of experimentation and have been um, playing with virtual facilitation, rolling out some free offerings to the community to help develop leadership, to help develop systems thinking capacity, which is something I think is really important, especially right now. <clears throat> and just nurturing relationships like i think this has rem reminded me the importance of nurturing relationships both personal and professional but um there's an opportunity here to humanize professional relationships and to build bonds that will last longer than this pandemic for sure and so i think it's just a really good time to be human and to connect with others at a human level and so i've been doing that with my professional network and it feels good and it feels good to be available for my clients however they need right now fantastic mm -hmm. so i've been asking um a lot of these women on the calls like what what is your relationship to leadership do you self-identify as a leader and how has that shifted during this time in, in COVID 19 yeah, so I do self-identify as a leader and uh, haven't always given myself the grace to step into that role, but um, absolutely I do. <clears throat> and I, you know, the word leader is so interesting and we could probably talk for an hour just on that, but um, you know, what is leadership? 
I, I think that there's many types of leaders that are stepping up right now to serve in some capacity. And it's not always the leaders that are, you know, at the front of the charge, like, like traditionally leading in that sense. There's a lot of folks leading from behind or leading from the working level. And <clears throat> how I've wanted to cultivate my own leadership and the leadership of others is in kind of both capacities. So yes, I'm hosting weekly leadership circles with my community um, and stepping into more of a role of um, coordinating and bringing people together. Um, but I've also been cultivating leadership in the background and behind the scenes and folks that I know who are serving important roles in their communities or in their organizations that might need help. Um, like yesterday, I, I called a friend who's a, a manager at one of the big corporations locally and um, have been just aware that right now everybody's reality is very different. And um, it's different if you're working from home and you're still employed or if you're not employed and looking for work or if you're, <clears throat> if you're homeschooling or not or if you're working in an essential role right now like those are all very different user experiences and so I called my friend and it was her birthday and she um she was telling me how her company doesn't have video chat capability they're like <clears throat> really behind the times so all of her online meetings have been by phone and she's just oh, wow. telling me like how draining it's been to be on the phone and it takes like twice the number of meetings to get the same amount of work done <clears throat> and it just really reminded me of like wow like I couldn't imagine being in 10 hours of phone calls all day like my mind would be fried and she was understandably struggling so you know I was just there for her and gave her some tips and let her know that I'm here and um listened without judgment um, and asked her what the best type of support that she needed is because I think that's a really good question to ask right now is like what do you need because it is so different for everybody um, so just those kinds of one-on-one -on -one reach outs and doing behind the scenes supporting others who I know need it um, so yeah leading from all directions and doing my best <laughs> Well, tell us a bit about the, the courageous conversations you've been hosting. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> it's interesting because uh, in February of this year, I decided to write a book and I had an opportunity to get into like a cohort of people, like a book club of folks that were writing a book and then COVID happened. <laughs> and so I, I knew that my like my time was getting getting infinitely more valuable like as I'm now homeschooling my kids or attempting to homeschool my kids and um and write this book and just to be be grounded for my family <clears throat> I didn't really want to sign up for any new things but when covid happened I felt like I felt a really deep um awareness of this need to serve right now and this need to do something and what i felt was really important in terms of a need like so in the early days and still we see a lot of people reacting to covid <clears throat> there's a lot of people taking steps to you know stem the bleeding to to flatten the curve to basically react to some of the things that are happening in the system <clears throat> And so while that is really important, um, so I study a lot about systems theory and about organizational systems. And um, the situation that we're in right now with COVID is unpredictable. It's really unpredictable. And one of the things I believe in my work and I still believe is that for teams and organizations and communities to develop the capacity to adapt is really important. I, I see a lot of people making predictions about what the next six to 12 months will look like. Like here's what transitioning back to normal will look like. Here's what normal even is. And I don't believe that it's safe or appropriate for us to make assumptions about what the future will look like because in any complex system that's in an unpredictable state and right now you could say that our system is in a state of chaos because <clears throat> 
it's like the butterfly effect. Like any one thing could happen, somebody could react and it could very much change the way that the system is behaving. So <clears throat> I think it's really important for us to build in system sensing capability, for us to listen and to pay attention to what's happening around us and not to avoid it because it makes us uncomfortable and not to tune it out or to numb it away but to really just face the reality of what's happening together and make sense of it collectively so that we can respond in a way that makes sense and is aligned with what we the way that we want to be responding not the way that we are pre-programmed or subconsciously programmed to respond <clears throat> so this weekly courageous community circle is my way of creating a container for a group of leaders to come together and one develop their own capacity to lead and to be courageous and to build each other up and two to sense the system to really say what's happening out there that we need to be paying attention to what are the um, events signals that influence how we need to be organizing together. And so it's been really cool. It's completely crowdsourced. I have a poll and I've put together a small team of people to help. And we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants, like figuring it out as we go. And um, we have a poll where people can come in and type their topics and then upvote existing topics. So every week the topic is based off of what people want to talk about. And it's 45 minutes, so I say it's like a shot. Like it's not, we're not going deep on any particular topics, but it's a, it's a meeting that's different from the other meetings. Like it's nourishing, it's not draining. You get a shot of like wheatgrass or goodness of um, build yourself up leadership vibes. And then you go on with the rest of your day. And um, I'm interested to see where it goes. It really is an experiment. And um, the folks who are part of it right now are grateful for it. And um, I now understand I'm not crazy for having started it. Like it's a need and I see, I'm not the only one doing this kind of thing. There's lots of examples of people organizing within community, pockets of community. And that is a beautiful thing to behold. Like I believe we need to be doing more of that. If folks want to plug into that, how, how can they get into that? Yeah. Um, just email me, email me and I will forward you the, the calendar invite. So my email is Jyoti, J-Y-O-T-I at spillplay.com, S-P-I-L-L-E play.com. And we can add it into the notes and stuff when you post this. Absolutely. Is there anything else? Um, do you have any message for our young people who are out here trying to get through this? Yeah. <clears throat> So, you know, I think the message, my message for young people is really to sense your own system. Like, I'm not going to give any pre-prescribed advice to anybody right now for the point I made earlier where everybody's situation is so different. And when I say sense your system, I don't just mean what's happening externally, like what's happening in your family, in your community, in your schools. Uh, I also mean what's happening for you internally because we are a part of the system, all of us, and our thoughts, our feelings, um, everything that's happening in our bodies is also part of the system. And so I would say that my biggest piece of advice is to listen, listen to yourself, listen to what's happening around you and, um, and just cultivate that, that ability to be in the moment because we, I believe with the power of our own intuition and the power of our own innate wisdom. And more than anything, I would like for all of us to learn to listen to ourselves a little bit more. And I think it's important to do that right now. So listen to yourself and respond from there is my advice. Thank you. You're so welcome. My pleasure.